Good morning, CTW Academy subscribers. In honor of Dan Evans, who won Washington, I think it was his second career title. Dan Evans has a really nice slice backhand. Actually, all the top players now on the tour are able to slice really well. But Evans uses it a lot and he uses it to stay in the point. He keeps it deep cross court, but then he'll throw in that occasional little short drop shot or not even a drop shot, but it's just real short and low. So he uses it so well. Um, many players <clears throat> are confused about what really is happening with a slice. So let me go over some of the basic fundamentals. First of all, with slice, you want a continental grip. When we think about a racket handle, which has these flat surfaces here, okay? I give them numbers, okay? So you've got number one on the top, that flat surface there. The little one on the side, number two, three, Four is here, five is on the bottom. It's the same thing for a lefty going the other way. Now, if you use the, the hand, use the inside knuckle of the uh, index finger and the heel pad as your two checkpoints. Those are your two checkpoints that you want on that flat surface. So for a slice, you're going to go for number two, continental grip. So I'm going to put that knuckle right there and the heel pad are now on number two. And I've got a slice grip. That's a continental. Now with continental, the racket face is naturally open. It's open if I'm hitting slice, backhand, or I can turn it around and now I've got slice forehand. I have not changed the grip. I just changed the angle of the racket face. There, um, right there, I'd say the racket is maybe open uh, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 or 45 degrees here. Now you can slice with a racket open 45 degrees, but you have to start very high with the racket and come down on the ball. Now you're swinging down on the ball, but the ball doesn't go down because the racket face is open. That's what's going to give you the net clearance. So don't be afraid to swing down on the ball. So most of the time though, let's say with Dan Evans, when he's hitting that slice deep cross court, He's not open 45 degrees. He may be open 10 degrees or 20 degrees max, and he's driving through the shot, okay? He's not coming down real sharp like when he wants to hit that drop shot or that short, low skidding shot. So you have to remember how much are you opening the face. It all depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to drive it deep, you only want the racket face open 10, 20 degrees. If you're trying for a, real, a lot of slice where you want the ball to skid so low, it's just coming up off the court, you're gonna go more. You're gonna go with the 45, let's say, and you're really coming down and across on that shot to get that extra spin. It'll also spin out for you so it spins out away from your opponent so <clears throat> the key is and I think many people here let's take a look with this many players just think they're way too open like this like they got to come under the ball when you think about the equator of the ball okay that imaginary line that's between pen and coach, okay? That's the equator of the ball. Now, you wanna think that you're gonna hit slightly below the equator. 
So my racket there is about 20 degrees. So I'm thinking just hitting a little bit below the equator or even, yeah, I'd say a slightly below the equator, all right? And you have to swing high to low. This is the opposite of topspin. Don't be afraid to swing down. I think the birds are enjoying my uh, presentation this morning. <laughs> Keep it down now. All right, so, um, you know, you're high to low. Racket face open, maybe 20 degrees. You don't want to think this, like I'm trying to come under the ball like this. That's not what a slice is all about. So here's what I'd like you to do, first of all, to start off with. Okay, I want you to go to the baseline and just drop hit some, some balls. Just drop hit, and I want you to swing down so much. I want you to get that feeling of swinging down. Now you can come down and through and then come back up slightly on the finish. But it's almost like I want you to try to hit the ball in the net. And you're going to see, you're going to get that nice, low, skidding slice. Because most players are thinking, oh man, I got to open that racket face like that and hit, you know, under the ball. And they simply pop it up and they give their opponent a field day. Okay, ball's just sitting up. So I want you to think down into the net, in the net, and you'll see, you'll start to get. You can see how that ball skids and stays low. So you can see how the ball is staying low after it bounces and it kicks out slightly to the left. So that's what you need to work on to start with. Then practice with a hitting partner or a pro or a ball machine and maintain that mindset like you're swinging down on the ball. So keep that mindset of hitting down on the shot. Use your left elbow to get that racket up high. That's also going to help. Racket here is only open 20 degrees, maybe 25. That's when I want to hit short and come across. There it is. Really thinking about coming down on the ball. And you see how that ball skids and stays low after it hits the ground. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember the key points. Number one, you need a continental grip. Number two, don't open the racket face too much. 45 degrees max, and when you open it that much, you have to really start high. Most of the time you're gonna use 10, 20, 30 degrees open, and you can still drive the ball deep. The other, th the other points, Get the left elbow up so you can get the racket nice and high. And the last point you have to remember, if you're still floating your slice, try and hit the ball right into the middle of the net. Swing down on it. The racket face is open. 
you're going to clear the net and it's going to be nice and low and skid like. Please give this video a like, a thumbs up. I'll tell you, this tennis business is a racket. <laughs> you know why I say that? I'm just joking, but I've been able to teach tennis for 50 years now. I am almost 74. In a couple of months, I'll be 74. And I've been able to support my wife, my two kids, 50 years doing something I really enjoy. You know, I'm out there helping people improve their game and I'm getting exercise and uh, it's, it's been a wonderful uh, career for me. So use my 50 years of experience to help you take your game to another level. All the best guys. Take care.